Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing? This is Kamo Work. And I'm Ringru. Hello, hello, hello. And guys, what we have for you today on the map of Slooks is a little bit of a disastrous replay. Rang, tell us what's going on here, please. This is one of the replays from the Divisional Disaster Tournament that I hosted just uh, last weekend. Me and Khan was casting it. Essentially, it's a tournament where you have to submit the worst deck possible and force your opponent to play it, and vice versa. And these are some of the matches, or this is one of the matches, from the semi-finals. So on left-hand side in blue, we have Right Eagle playing as 78 Sturm. And on the right-hand side in red, we have Her Robert playing Group Turonia. And uh, you got to realize, Right Eagle is playing with Her Robert's deck, and Her Robert is playing with Turonia's deck. So it's about who can sabotage the other person's deck in a you know, reasonable manner. And as you can see from the skies, things, things are a bit sabotaged. But at the same time, I mean, it was really, really fascinating to see some of these decks get played because we saw units that we barely ever see. Like, for example, these these actual bike scouts. How often <laughs> do you see them? Or the KFZ fours? Yeah. Like, you just stuff you never see. But it was an absolute blast to cast. So, actually, again, so thank you, Ryan. And actually, thank PLK. PLK had a great hand in this as well. So, thank you guys both. And holy crap, that KFZ pretty much killed all of them apart from Run. So, that, that was pretty good. <laughs> Or yes, recon, indeed. Recon now, the funny thing about this, I will say, there was, there was a, a, definitely a couple of extremely dirty decks uh, yeah. from the match. But you can see right now, like, PTRS attacks happening over here to the north. These guys can get cut to, cut to shreds, like, mm -hmm. any second here. Whoa! Okay, well, I hadn't expected an entire anti-air placement getting knocked down immediately, but so it did. Yeah, that was really north, strange. We got the bomb in the flat gun as it slowly flies over. And one of them actually gets shot down. <laughs> oh, it was planes, man. They they only go like 130 ish kilometers an hour. But you know when you th when you throw a bomb at the side of the airplane, like you you get some devastating results every now and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are these these are bad decks. Like for example, Right Eagle's deck has like no infantry, it's just like leaders. And then her Robert's deck, he's playing. It's it's just PTRS. <laughs> just a lot of PTRS, grudge. I mean, if you look at the southern side of the map, that, that kind of um, quandary happened consistently, how we have just hordes of troops, but they didn't control anything. Mm hmm Because the problem is, with the PTRS troops, they don't, uh, and the recon, they don't actually project any front line, which is a bit of an issue. Well, the funny thing as well to kind of watch here is we saw vehicles that we just don't see. Mm -hmm. Like, there's the KFZs here. Um, actually, if, oh my gosh, what was one that we saw consistently? We actually saw the... the... Oh, the RSO? Yes, the RSO. So yeah. there were some crazy support issues that were going on on Saturday. Yeah, it's a real popular, like with the RSO, is a real popular thing was to put regular infantry in these RSO transports. The RSO only goes 30 kilometers an hour on the road. So it takes forever and a day for your infantry reinforcements to actually get to the front line. It's probably faster to just run, to be honest. But it was um, also kind of fascinating to see some kind of very, very different, unique matchups. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, some of the players were extremely polite in the way they kind of screwed their opponents. Other ones, <laughs> well, they didn't even bother trying to take them to dinner. They just they just put them over a table. It was awful. Yeah, but like, these decks were seeing uh, the worst of the worst because this is from the semi-finals. And as you can see there, I mean, I don't want to keep stressing this, but they are bad. You would not want to play these in, in a 1v1, like a normal 1v1. Oh, look in the town down south, the stuck yes. is getting pounded, yeah. Well, and that's, this is the kind of the amusing thing, too, is that we would have unsupported <laughs> vehicles go into a town, and normally that's a kiss of death. Mm -hmm. But when your opponent had zero to be seen, like, it would actually, it was a legitimately viable option. Yeah, it's... This tournament has really promoted a lot of bad play that you should not usually do in the match, but you, you're just forced to in this in this case. So um, I will say that there was a lot of calls to have this kind of happen again. Um, if you know, depending on how things go, maybe that's a potential. But we we wanted to make sure. Actually, excuse me, Ryan and PLK wanted to make sure that we were as inclusive for the entire community as possible. So yeah. um, if you want to see stuff like this, though, please let us know what you might like, and we'll see what we can do to make that happen. I would like to do this again with, with DLC divisions, just to mm -hmm. spice things yes. up. The problem, however, is that not everyone owns a DLC division, so it would be a bit more inclusive, so to speak. With this one, we only made it so the baseline game divisions are in, so anyone can join in. But maybe if there's enough, you know, 
opportunity. Um, yeah, like if enough people want to next time and actually have DLC divisions and want to play and could definitely open it up. Probably just try to keep it just historical past, not do any of the Normandy stuff because mm -hmm. just don't want to make it too crazy where you have to own every single piece of DLC to be allowed eligible because that would be a little bit too unreasonable. It would, unfortunately, indeed. Actually, this should go over here. Just kind of <laughs> the PTRSs are charging across the open field. Well, oh, no. one anti-aircraft gun. I'm really great. I thought I thought Flak 20 mils were better in this, but apparently they're not. Well, that was the consistent message too. We'd have like a a, like a recon airplane come in and take oh, out I'm like shooting. eleven of these biplanes in a match. We'd have instant ground aces and instant air aces. It was just it was it was incredible. Yeah. Like, yeah, power definitely was a uh, Red Baron-esque, with all these biplanes just flying about. Well, just the amusing thing, too, is that I just, I could not stop laughing and giggling. We, we had such incredible, bizarre things going on. Mm -hmm. um, now, we did have a bit of a talk uh, this past weekend about the, the virtues of the 45 mil versus the ZIS-3. Um, without going too much further into it, uh, definitely the debate was whether or not it was worth having a, a lighter AT gun, but less worthwhile. Or to have this HE. So, um, in, in, in the intervening days, have you thought about that anymore or no? Uh, 45 is probably the worst choice for screwing over your opponent in this case. Just because it has the less AP and it also can't be used as an artillery. Mm -hmm. Even though this is free, you get less of them and it's a bit more expensive. Just the ability to throw down high explosive shells at long range is, is nasty. And it's actually, her robot's doing a pretty good job so far. In this match, he's got his PTRS scroll to cover in the front line, and really, right eagle. He only has a few tanks. He's a few of those T26s and Stugs, and not much else that's really holding the front. Just her Robert's deck is is dirty. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that thing was never getting clean. There's a, there's a lot of blood in those hands. Mm -hmm. Um, but somebody is Sturm. So why 70 is Sturm? What, what is so inherently or possibly bad about the 70 is Sturm that we saw so much of it on Saturday? So the reason being, they have probably like the best worst choice for this tournament is, well, they have a lot of expensive activation point slots can, compared to other divisions. And Harry set it up, you have to, you know, fill up 49 out of 50 activation points. At least one, one tank slot, reserves. Like one tank in A and B, one anti tank in A and B phase, yada yada. And with all those rules in mind, it's pretty easy just to take a lot of. Not just enough crap units to make the deck legal for this tournament, while still being really bad. You just do not have enough stuff in comparison to other divisions. And yes, people do take like Nash Horns and Marders, which are. You know, great, awesome, long-range anti-tank weaponry. But when there's no tanks to really shoot at, because no one really takes tanks in these tournament decks, they just end up being completely useless. Well, the fascinating thing, too, is that we definitely saw the limitations of some of the Soviet infantry. It seemed like the predilection was to go and give all the Machikis to really, really take advantage of their really crap range. Yeah. Um, but... Conversely, on the the German on the Axis side, we often saw either airsofts like the, the, the disheartened troops, or we would see troops that had no AT. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, like it was it was just fascinating to see different perspectives on how to screw your opponent. Yeah, it, it, it was really cool. And looking at this right now, I mean, this, this match is just hilarious. Her Robert is you know constantly bringing in these biplane bombers, and they're doing a really good job. Like, uh, they're killing anti-aircraft units, they're bloody blowing up tanks, and these things are only 25 points each. They're, they're cheaper on a goddamn tank. It certainly is, and, and honestly, they're taking advantage of the fact that the 20 mils and really anti-air overall is really subpar yeah. right now. I'm trying to keep them out. I'm... I, I swear the Flag 38 was better than this. Well, apparently they can't even stress out a single, single biplane here. <laughs> well, I think he's expecting to go so much quicker. <laughs> He's like aiming ahead of him, and that's why he continues to miss. He does finally get a kill here, but he does pay for it with his life. And I'll tell you what, there are less of those anti-aircraft guns than there are those stinking biplanes. Yes, there's, there's a lot of those biplanes, and it's probably probably a good thing in this case to have access to them, because there's not much anti-air really to be seen. Hopefully you want to get into B phase. I think 
I mean, uh, Right Eagle's tank does get a little bit better. This is actually a pretty good map for using Nash Orange and whatnot. The previous maps were all CQC maps, while this one is much more open for the Rhinos to frolic about with their massive pack guns. Well, you know what? They're just getting a little bit horny. It makes sense, you know? <laughs> exactly. So there's a lot of open countryside. Now, um... Interesting as well, we did talk about the, the econ curves in this, but uh, we tended to see a lot of V for victory, actually, for mm -hmm. this tournament. Now, why was that? A lot of people picked that and um, Juggernaut, because it gave you a pretty low income in those first 20 minutes. And that was a good way to screw over your opponent, because just having less stuff early on means... You know, you can't really buy as much. And then they'd usually not have a lot of C-Face units, or even they have Juggernaut income. It doesn't really matter. Certainly true. Now, we did see the occasional kind of heavy piece, like we see down south as Pack 43, right mm -hmm. on that, that beacon. But like you said before, so much of it, it was like, okay, you have this massive I kill everything cannon, now what? Yeah, you, you got to kill some PTRS squads, a sniper team. I mean, there's not a single, like, proper regular infantry in this town down south. We've got, like, 11 man recon all the way down south, and then oh, like, a Sturm of Viki in the mid, but. I think this match has been very devoid of actual proper infantry and it's just been leaders and recons going at it. Well, and the unfortunate thing is that um, White Eagle was just so kind in giving his opponent that off-map Oh yeah. potential kill here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people picked uh, off-map units because it just, I guess it was a less of a you only get you can pick like the one to them single and a phase, and then they're not going to last as long because you only got three shots. But arguably the off maps, I think they probably were better in just taking regular artillery because you could just take regular artillery, no supply trucks to really screw over your opponent if you wanted to. Well, these off maps can clear an area and then you can push on through. Well, that was the interesting thing too, is that we saw probably the most supply trucks, more more supply trucks in the single match than we would see over the entirety of season two <laughs> of the SD yeah. League. But you can see right now in the southern part of this town, we have a lot of radios, but not a lot of guys to talk through them. It's it's almost a one radio per man kind of idea. Yeah. So don't get me wrong; it's beautiful to see this kind of uh, you know industry being utilized for the the OKW, or excuse me, OKH actually, um, but. To what end? There wasn't a lot of support that was going to be able to be given to it. Oh, he kills the off-map artillery for That's okay. sneaky Messerschmitt strafe. Third, oh. The third artillery barrage is already oh. down. That's going to be right on top of the pack 43. Uh, here comes the BMW brigade. I didn't see. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, damn, we haven't seen this many bikes as well. Just terrible unit. So, so good choice there, Robert. Well, so the, the, the Germans are having a midlife crisis right now. Mm -hmm. You know what? I mean, it's the end of the war. <laughs> lots of Russians. Like, it's it's yeah. a terrifying time. you got to just reevaluate your life. They got, yeah, it's already perfect. you already got, like, those biker gang helmets. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Now, amusingly enough, this PTRS, though, t takes out two of their midlife crises immediately. Yeah, the PTRS has been pretty decent in the town. I mean, there's not much infantry as a fight route to begin with, but anytime. Any armor comes through, the disc gets shot at from three different angles from very fast fire and anti tank rifles. But we are finding, though, because we are finding that it is 16 8, and uh, White Eagle shows no signs of really being able to push this back to the direction. Hmm. We are getting more and more of this BMW, so consistently. Our stroke Fuhrers, I mean, it was really kind of, you know, it's good. It's great. I mean, we definitely saw a lot of experience, but who did they give it to? <laughs> There's no one to share a truth. All these leaders having to lead from the front now. Can't hide behind your mass of Panzer Grenadiers or Strokey to take the fight to the enemy. Now, I might be wrong here. Did a White Eagle provide Herr Robert with any kind of anti air? Ah. Uh, I think so, because you'd have to get, like, at least one or two anti aircraft slots just because. They're like 1 AP slots. But usually Russian anti-air pieces have just been just contracts. And usually just in the C phase. And they're, they're, they're really terrible as anti-air. They might as well just be a support unit, honestly. 
Well, the kind of funny thing about this, too, is that this ju 188 is a recon plane, but at the same time, he's just trying to fire at range with two turrets. So he's got a 13 mil and a 7.9, so... What's like... even... Oh, yeah. I want to shoot down those planes. But, you know, not exactly a uh, good angle. Like a one... It's not really a C-130. Oh. Oh, here we go. Ravanti, yeah, helping out. Now the question is, with those dead, is that going to be a resumption really for the German equipment? I, I don't know that it will be. I, I don't know either. I mean, he's, he's 109 recon plane to a real huge boon because they can just straight everything. They, they can't do it for a long time because they have very limited ammunition. But it helps out in picking out those pesky anti-tank guns because those studs yes. need to stay alive. Because if anything, Right Eagle does have the armor advantage. With his stugs compared to just the handful of T-34 Comrotis that her Robert has available. Although, if he does get into a mobility fight, I would argue that um, her Robert has a bit of the upper hand there. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually add in the PTRSs as well. And I mean, if nothing else, this you'll really, really cheese off the guy who's got to paint the Strodes. Uh, but a couple of new anti-tank guns, and it's going to continue to just pound on these strokes, which is first of all, shocking that they haven't penetrated yet, even with the APCRs. Mm -hmm. Those strokes are doing a pretty good job. They're, they're really, like, tanks. Assault That's... guns, please. Especially when uh, there's only 45mm guns on the field. But it's 18-6 now, so either White Eagle takes a couple of uh, points back, or... Well... It might have been that his deck laid an egg. <laughs> yeah, he... Yeah, the, the 78th deck, which was made by her, Robert... Like, just not having much infantry means that your, your front line is really screwed up, as we can see. Well, hopefully, hopefully I don't ruin it too much, but I will say, I remember the first that we did with the 70th deck... Uh, of Herr Roberts, I think it was over in like six or eight minutes. It was yeah, it, was, it was a bloodbath. Down south, we got uh, two man recon squads flanking behind enemy lines. Well, I've got that the Pioneer Fury has a surprising amount of uh, firepower. Yeah, it's got those um the, like, the, the bundle grenades. Yeah, it was those things that go kaboom. I can't see killing something. The other funny thing, too, I think about Saturday is that we ended up watching so many of these units die, and we go to like the case, the kill screen, and they'd be like, wait a second, weren't there like 75 units getting killed? And we'd be like a thousand points. Mm -hmm. With everything being so cheap, it was kind of insane to watch a bloodbath, such a bloodbath, and, and really have such a small cost at the end of it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of small teams going at it, especially right now, as we're seeing. There's really not much substantial on said map. But the Met, I, I do like how Ray Eagle has managed to secure the air power now once he shot down the million and one blade planes that were coming at him. But it's not really going to help him at this point because Robert has a very good position. Yes, indeed. And although we're getting closer and closer to phase C, um, even the recon troops over here from Herr Robert, uh, courtesy of White Eagle, I think his recon's going to be better than the 78th recon. Yeah. I think I think in general, the the Russian troop choices, if you're trying to pick the bad ones, are better in the German runs. Yes, yes. Let's see uh, the recon. Also Here worth mentioning the Russian version of the RSO trucks with the Voroshilovats. <laughs> oh yeah. Thirty-five k uh, kilometers per hour. There was one other one too that that memory escapes me at the moment that was equally Hungarian? terrible. It's the Hungarian one, I think you're right, yes. Hungarian one of, like, the Rangan reels. Yes, that's what it was. Actually, we were reliably informed, I think it was by, actually by Rooster. Hansel Lloyd. That was the name oh, that's what it was? Hansel Lloyd. Oh, yes, the Hansel Lloyd, yes. And the Rooster actually let us know um, that it was a an artillery carriage. Oh. But down south, you might see the Pioneer Fuhrer die. And if the Pioneer Fuhrer dies, then everything south of the river is Russian. Will be very soon, and the Pioneer Fury he doesn't have any grenades left. Uh, it'll definitely help out in a ma battle like this. But you Those know people what? just have like SMGs and mossins. Yes, yes. 
when it comes down to it, a sniper as well will go and definitely turn the tide on that one. Uh, no, Dozer is coming in around to try to take out this Flak 38. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a price paid in blood here, but... um. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow, that was shocking. Cover bonus really helps out a ton. Well, the PTRS over here in the corner might take out uh, this next upcoming truck, even as we take down to the final seconds. Boom. Yep. And with that, uh, Herr Robert does secure a win over White Eagle. Mm hmm. And like I said, you can see. I'm sorry, go for it, sir. No, no, no. Like the kill was like you yes. were going to say. Yes. A lot of death, a lot of destruction. I mean, White Eagle losing a huge number of vehicles, not even counting the Opal Blitzes, but just a lot of assault guns, a lot of tanks, motorcycles by the score. But not to be outdone, that pack 43 on the other side. What's that? Three oh. anti tank guns, a couple of tanks, an infantry squad or two. Stug's doing day in. Wow. But definitely some highlights. Just just nothing lasting, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the 78th has good like individual units, like the Stug and the Pack 43 and Nashorns, if you do get them. Mm -hmm. But you don't have anything to support them. That's the issue. Indeed. But folks, if you like what you actually saw in this one, just wait until Thursday because it's a real, a real, real messed up uh, kind of bit going on there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Rang, any final thoughts about the, the game today? Uh, none rush forever. It's just an absolute disaster. It absolutely was. It absolutely was. Uh, but folks, thank you so much for kind of coming out for this one. Please come back uh, to check out the match on Thursday. And, and actually, you should check out the stream over on Rangry's channel from Saturday. It's a real, real good mm -hmm. time. Um, I guess until next time, I'm Connor Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.